Welcome to Alaska Weather, a production of Alaska Public Media and the National Weather Service, Alaska Region. Produced and broadcast daily from the studios of KAKM, Alaska Weather provides complete forecasts, public, marine, and aviation for all of Alaska. Alaska Weather is made possible by the following sponsors. Indie Alaska is an innovative weekly web series capturing the diverse and colorful lifestyle of Alaskans. Real stories of everyday Alaskans at work and play. Supported in part by Alaska Pipeline Service Company. The National Weather Service. Good Friday, everyone. I'm meteorologist Dave Snyder with the National Weather Service. As always, we encourage you to stay up to date with the very latest weather information by your NOAA weather radio or online at weather.gov slash Alaska or arh.noaa.gov. Give us a call on the weather info line. You'll get your forecast there, 800-472-0391. And find information during the day in about all parts of Alaska as it involves our earth science and weather picture at Twitter on Facebook under NWS Alaska and on YouTube in the afternoon. Of course, you get your daily afternoon map briefing, just a short brief summary of what's going on around the entire state. And then following this show uh, through our broadcast partner, alaskapublic.org, you can get the complete Alaska weather broadcast. So don't worry if you miss a little bit of the show, you can always go back online and watch it there. The afternoon broadcast is a little bit shorter, a little more cell phone friendly. And on YouTube, of course, you can watch the 30-minute uh, broadcast and just kind of scrub through there using the slider and find the marine section or the aviation section, whichever part you like to watch the most. Here's a look at the hazardous weather across Alaska as it stands at this point. On the north and south sides of the Brooks Range, we're under winter weather advisories. Now for areas around the Colville Basin and north and east, we're expecting those advisories to continue well into Saturday there. Watch for accumulation of snow probably on the order of two to maybe as much as four inches in a few isolated areas. But the farther south you go, uh, the advisories will drop off a little bit sooner through this evening, including the middle and upper Tananaw Valley. That should end around uh, the six to eight o'clock hour. But we're also watching for areas of freezing rain uh, on top of some light accumulations of snow, generally two to three inches. So again, the further south you go from Fort Yukon, watching for more freezing rain. The further north you go toward the Brooks Range, you're watching for generally snow. But the winds may a little be a little bit stronger with north and northeasterly flow up to 40 miles an hour. That could really lower that visibility. So prepare for some poor moving around town conditions there. Or if you're driving on the roads, watch for slick spots and also poor visibility. Now, one other thing to note is things are freezing up quickly. You're looking at Kotzebue Sound here. Here's Kotzebue, Kivalina, and Shishmaref. And our Alaska Sea Ice Program today detected some shore fast ice uh, forming right along the shores of Kotzebue and on the eastern side of Kotzebue Sound. So watching for more ice to form as temperatures continue to drop throughout the weekend. We'll have a full view of the Arctic coast here with our sea ice update as we get into the marine segment here in just a few minutes. Here's a look out to the west, and you'll notice that uh, strong northerly flow is working its way through the Bering Strait down the southwest coast. There's plenty of dry air here across the northern sections and western areas of the Bering, north of Shemya, as high pressures in command there. That will start to move eastward a little bit more, and as it does so, it's latching onto more of that cold air and pulling more of that cold and dry Arctic weather southward toward the Aleutians and the Alaska Peninsula. It doesn't take a meteorologist to pick out where the moisture channel is right now. That is that big long plume stretches all the way from a typhoon across eastern Asia into the Gulf of Alaska. Uh, we'll tell you which way the wind blows here, just like Bob Dylan would tell us, of course. Uh, Vong Phong continues its trek northward, and it's still a powerful typhoon. And that moisture will eventually find its way north and east toward Alaska. You can see that process is already beginning here. We have several other waves of low pressure on the eastern side of the Kamchatka Peninsula. And once high pressure moves out of the way, those will start to move along in the flow. But that's going to take some time before we get into that part of the process. A look at the rest of Alaska shows that low pressure is the main weather story across the Gulf of Alaska at this point. That's this ball that you see spinning across the central part of the open waters. And this is also a typhoon remnant from Fan Phone. The strong south and westerly flow is really wrapping into southeastern Alaska, bringing moderate to heavy, even very heavy rainfall at times reported around Hyder earlier this afternoon. We expect some of the worst winds and heaviest rainfall to be in southeastern Alaska and especially across the northern Gulf Coast, including places like Yakutat. 
watching for some rivers and streams to come up a little bit, but at this time there's no flooding that's expected. However, in some of the heavier rainfall areas, we should be on the watch for landslides or maybe some mudslides. If you get a whole lot of rain and you have a hillside that you're worried about, keep an eye on it and be prepared to move out of the way. Across the middle Tanana Valley, you can see plenty of clouds there. The moisture that's been working its way northward, of course, is running into a lot of cold air. And at the surface where we've trapped that cold air is where we're running into the issue of freezing rain at this hour. Uh, the northern and western sections of Alaska are also experiencing colder weather, but you're already into that northerly flow. So as moisture moves westward and runs into the disturbance dropping southward, chances are you'll be dealing with all snow there. And across southwest, you'll see some breaks in the clouds through the next couple days. More often than not, you'll see passing clouds, maybe a snow shower or a flurry, and just a much colder experience as we go through the Columbus Day weekend. Out across the central and eastern Aleutians, the Alaska Peninsula, generally a northerly flow, occasionally looking at some showers of snow, maybe mixed in with rain there uh, north of the Aleutians, but uh, the Pribilovs will kind of be on that line through the weekend. And low pressure sitting and spinning across Alaska will draw up another storm as it heads into Sunday and Monday. Watch for that on the surface weather charts here in just a moment. This afternoon, the low pressure system there that was currently part of Fan Phone is now 969 millibars. You can see it's wrapping in on itself. The occlusion here is warm and cold air mixing up. And as that south and westerly flow moves to the north and eastern coast, there certainly is a quite a wealth of moisture attached to that, although there is some drier air working into the eastern and northern side now. And this area of low pressure will gradually start to fill in and fall apart. On the north ends, we've seen scattered areas of snow, some of that occasionally moderate at times, and then all the speckled clouds you see on the satellite picture is just dry air on the eastern and southern side of high pressure across the western bearing. By tonight, low pressure is working east of Kodiak Island and northward toward Prince William Sound and filling in, so the pressure reading is going up. At 980 millibars, the south and westerly flow reaching southeastern Alaska is still fairly strong, and with that, some gusty winds should be expected, especially along the inner waterways and points north, and we're also watching for some moderate to occasionally heavy rain. Some of that could reach into Prince William Sound. A frontal boundary along the Alaska Range and points east will trap the coldest of air still north of south central Alaska. So most areas won't be dealing with uh, too much more than mixed precipitation at times. And eventually we still think a lot of this will turn over to a mainly rain event. Across the Yukon Valley and north, snow showers will be the rule of the night and into tomorrow, especially for areas north of the Brooks Range. Out across the Bering, periods of rain and fog are expected south and west of the Pribilovs to the central and western chain where high pressure takes command. By Saturday, high pressure drops southward of Attu once again at 1,028 millibars. That's going to open the door for colder air again to move southward of the Seward Peninsula. Watch for snow showers there around Norton Sound and the yukon Kuskokwim Delta. Periods of rain and snow showers there from St. Matthew to about St. Paul into the Bristol Bay regions. And then we're looking at more of a light rainfall and probably some fog at times across the central and eastern Aleutians. With low pressure moving inland across south central, watch for that to continue to weaken, though the sky will remain unsettled as we go through the first part of the weekend. Plenty of clouds across the middle and upper Yukon, but a better chance of snow showers the further north you go toward the Brooks Range and the Arctic. The coast. As this low pressure system weakens, the winds will gradually relax across southeastern Alaska, but there may still be some areas of moderate to occasionally heavy rainfall. Notice down to the south, another storm is working northward on the heels of our current system. That reinforces low pressure and reorganizes itself as we get into Sunday and drops back to 984 millibars. Another frontal boundary will form east of Kodiak Island, working into Prince William Sound and across the southeastern coastal waters. You'll see another cold front working toward the Pacific Northwest and probably reaching close to Haida Gwaii. Just ahead of that, especially in the southern areas around Ketchikan, Craig, Klawak, Haider, you're going to have a better opportunity for some heavier rainfall there and probably some stronger gusts for a little while. On the west side, we're still dealing with the colder side of the storm. It's also drier, but there's a better chance you'll see some snow showers pack, passing through with that. And where this flow gets a little more constricted between Atka and probably Unalaska and Dutch Harbor, Pilot Point, Port Hyden, Sand Point, Cold Bay and Falls Pass, the winds will likely pick up. So if you're in one of those areas that's a little more gap wind prone, where it gets a little more blustery than your surrounding areas, you're probably going to be dealing with some wind on Sunday. Across the interior, snow showers continue, though it shouldn't be quite as heavy as anything you've seen tonight or tomorrow. Look out around a Norton Sound and Unalakleet. Snow showers will be passing through there. You might get a little extra snow as this trough of low pressure is rotating around the northern side and swinging through. After that passes, the clouds may break up a little bit. 
for Sunday afternoon. Across the Arctic coast, north and easterly winds will continue there. Pockets of fog and passing flurries should be expected. A lot of that uh, will start to wind down as we get into Sunday. But uh, generally speaking, temperatures are trending toward colder and the days are trending toward darker. So, of course, winter is coming our way. Uh, Temperature-wise across southeast, most areas are in the lower to mid-50s today with that onshore flow and wet and cloudy weather. Around Prince William Sound, we saw most areas from Valdez to Cordova and Whittier in the 40s, 52 out around Middleton Island. So there's still some warmer air out there, and chances are that frontal boundary is sitting right about here. Across Cook Inlet, uh, temps in the upper 30s to mid-40s from Anchorage all the way down to Homer. Squenna was 34, Talkeetna 44, and on the other side of the hill in the pass, temps were only in the 20s for Healy and Greeley. Now you see it uh, 37 degrees, 33 around Fairbanks, 27 in Eagle, 33 in Northway. Fort Yukon was showing a cooler 25. Anaktuvik Pass down to 18, 20s from Barrow to Akdesuk. Uh, Prudhoe Bay and Dead Horse, 21, 26 around Kaktovik. As you got toward Kotzebue Sound, the northern side was in the upper 20s. Shishmaref, uh, an area southward of the lower 30s. Nome was 31 degrees. Unalakleet was about 31. The Yukon Kuskokwim Delta on the coastal areas, most areas were in the 30s, but once you got inland a little bit, even Bethel was showing 29 degrees. Grayling and McGrath also in the upper 20s. St. Lawrence Island 36, the Pribilovs near 40, Bristol Bay in the mid 30s. Once you get into the Pacific side of the uh, Alaska Peninsula, uh, temps like uh, Sand Point were at 43, but most other places were in the upper 30s. And the Aleutians were looking at temperatures in the lower to mid 40s for most of your day. Now, overnight low temps will stay in the teens and 20s for the interior. Southwestern Alaska, Nome's at 21, uh, Barrow 16, the Aleutians in the lower 40s, the Alaska Peninsula just shy of 40 degrees, uh, Bristol Bay likely in the 20s. Uh, Kodiak's looking at temperatures in the upper 30s with south central into the upper 30s and lower 40s, so probably warming up a little bit from where we are right now. Upper 40s and lower 50s for southeast with highs there tomorrow in the lower 50s. Uh, even warmer though the further south you go toward Craig and Klawak. Prince William Sound will see highs in the mid uh, lower to mid 40s, let's say. Mid 40s for south central with rain. Upper 30s and uh, probably, yeah, let's say upper 30s for the middle Tanana Valley. Teens and 20s for areas on the south slopes of the Brooks Range and for the Arctic coast, mid 20s, including Barrow at 25. Kotzebue Sound in the upper 20s and low 30s. Gnome's looking at 30. Uh, the southwest coast in the lower 30s. The Alaska Peninsula and the chain all in the 40s for your Saturday. Flying weather looks sketchy for areas east of Valdez all the way to Cordova, uh, Wrangell, St. Elias region into the northern sections of southeast as well as uh, most areas on the eastern side of the inner waterways. Otherwise, MVFR conditions should rapidly improve to VFR if you're flying further out into the Gulf and around uh, Kodiak and southwest, including Bristol Bay, you should see VFR conditions as we get into the back half of the afternoon. Watch for IFR conditions along the spine of the Brooks Range, of course, with MVFR across the Arctic coast, St. Matthew down through the Pribilovs, the southwest coast, and a good chunk of the eastern Aleutians and the Alaska Peninsula. Now, pass conditions should be on their worst up around the Brooks Range. IFR for both Anaktuvik and Adigan Pass with snow and blowing snow. Lake Clark and Merrill Pass may lift to MVFR very late in the day, but I would get the guess that most areas will be around IFR. A rainy pass may hover around MVFR and then lean toward IFR conditions through the day. Some improvements should be expected in Windy Pass, perhaps VFR conditions as we go through your afternoon. Visible Isabel Pass should head toward Visual as we get through late Saturday afternoon. Mentasta Pass, we expect to hold around VFR conditions through your day. Tanita Pass heading for MVFR. Portage Pass also looks to see some improvements during the afternoon. And Chilkoot and White Pass should lean over toward IFR conditions throughout your Saturday. Uh, freezing levels, obviously, with the colder weather setting in, the surface freezing line drops to about Bristol Bay. And hovers pretty close to the southern coastline, but lifts a little bit around the Susitna Valley. Otherwise, the warm air aloft is shifting eastward from south central, heading for southeastern Alaska. Levels as high as 6,000 feet to as low as 2,000 feet and below. So watch for a lot of changes across the Yukon and across southeastern Alaska, with most other areas starting out sub-freezing tomorrow morning. Icing potential is certainly there. There's a lot of moisture, but for most areas, you're going to have to climb a little bit higher to find the worst of it. From south central to the eastern Gulf Coast, generally above 4 to even 6,000 feet. We're going to say 6,000 feet for tomorrow for most areas there. And below 5,000 feet, that would be below 5,000 feet for the eastern areas uh, for the southern Brooks Range. Watch for occasional moderate elsewhere. Uh, most areas are going to be dealing with light to isolated moderate across the Yukon Valley, across southwest on the Kuskokwim Valley, across the southern Gulf Coast, 
uh, most areas again are seeing at least some risk for icing potential tomorrow. Obviously with the moisture in place and the cold air, that's to be expected. Tomorrow's jet stream shows the trough of low pressure slowly working eastward. Here's the next ridge guiding the surface high pressure across the western bearing. But right now we are firmly in the grips of that strong southerly flow ahead of the trough. So we've got plenty more where this came from. We are in an unsettled pattern and we're going to stay there for at least another week or so. Northerly flow coming through the Bering Strait reaches up to 20 to 40 knots there around the Seward Peninsula and the Bering Strait and then increases even more as it runs across the Pribilovs as high as 50 knots. That trough in the upper atmosphere is supporting the trough at 9,000 feet and ahead of that this is all the wet weather moving in from the south and west 15, 30, even 45 knots across the Gulf. Slower winds coming in and wrapping around the north side about 10 to 15 knots across the middle Tanana Valley. Similar conditions there at 3,000 feet. That broad southwesterly flow moving wet air right into southeast 20 to 35 knots. Wind speed slow a little bit across south central. That's good news there. 15 to 20 knots across Norton Sound and then much faster flow again as you get out across St. Matthew, St. Lawrence and the Pribilovs. Watch for some turbulence in those areas and we've got that drawn in here generally below 4,000 feet. Watch for occasional to widespread moderate across the northern sides of the Kotzebue Sound from Point Hope up toward Point Lay and then also around the spine of the Brooks Range, uh, especially on the south side. Below 4,000 feet across the Aleutians tomorrow and at least some chop across a widespread area of the Bering and then across the northern parts of the Gulf. Watch for those stronger easterly winds, especially in the morning tomorrow. That's going to produce some occasional moderate turbulence there. Some of that could reach into Prince William Sound and as far south as Sitka. That's a look at your aviation forecast. I'll be back in just a few minutes with an update on the complete sea ice edge and, of course, your marine weather. Stay tuned. Good evening, everybody. I'm Mary O'Connor with the Alaskan Aviation Safety Foundation. This evening, we are honored to have Ron Sheardown back on our show. Ron is an honoree in the 2014 Alaska Aviation Legends, which is a project that honors the men and women of Alaskan aviation and celebrates their contributions and shares their aviation stories. Welcome back to the show, Ron. Thank you. On our last show, we were talking about some of the rescues that you participated in and how some of the technology has changed. You have over 10,000 flight hours in the polar region. Is there any special safety equipment that you recommend that pilots take with them and that you still use? I, I'm a little old-fashioned. I still carry the, the, the equipment that I've always carried, uh, a tent, a good sleeping bag, a good polar sleeping bag, and, uh, and um, a stove uh, and other equipment, uh, along with the modern uh, 406 CLT and the PLB and, uh, and a sat phone. Um, the, um, that, the, the, that whole area has changed from, from say, the 1950s. Uh, at that time, um, a Gibson girl was probably the, the only thing that was still out there from World War II as a search um, beacon, um, which never worked very well. Um, the, um, the SARA units uh, came out in the late 50s, I think about 1959, 1960. Uh, was a, it was built in, in um, England. Uh, <clears throat> it, it didn't work in the wintertime because it had a, a wet cell battery that froze, <laughs> so it was of very little value in the wintertime. Um, the, um, then there was the CPI and, and a number of others, then the 121.5, uh, mm -hmm. 243 uh, beacons, and now the 406, which is an improvement on all of them. So uh, there's huge changes there. Uh, very few airplanes are missing for more than a few days at a time today. It isn't like you have to be prepared for months um, or, pre or prepared to walk out. Uh, it, uh, it's, it's a whole different world out there today and, and probably less survival gear is, is necessary than it was previous. But pilots should still be dressed for proper conditions, right. whether it's, Absolutely. it's Arctic yeah. or it's just cold yeah, weather. Right. And um, being prepared for comfort mm -hmm. um, might be more of mm -hmm. an issue rather than right. being able to survive for two months by right. oneself. I still carry winter clothing uh, all summer uh, because it can get pretty chilly out there and, and good rain gear. Uh, yeah, I think you still need that, but... Uh, um, uh, it's it's not 
It, it's a changing world, and the technology has, has certainly improved it. We were talking about uh, GPSs, and you mm -hmm. mentioned that you always carry two in case one doesn't work. Right. And what about um, paper charts and sectionals? I always carry paper charts because if you, if you like try to fly through Rainy Pass uh, with a GPS <coughs> map, the map is so small, you're really not sure of, of what which creek you're on. <laughs> uh, I, uh, I, uh, when, I go, when I go to go through a, a canyon, I take the old sectional out and uh, I have it highlighted and I follow the sectional through. Even though I have the GPS's back up, I don't trust it as a primary. Uh, it's just, the, the screen is just too small to, uh, uh, to, to give you the definition that you need. Mm -hmm. And what about weather cameras? Um, that's one way of checking the weather that right. I imagine you yeah. didn't have back yeah. in those that's, days either. That's a fact, and uh, uh, I came in from Nome with my helicopter last Tuesday, and. Uh, and um, uh, my uh, talking to flight service and got my briefing and uh, and uh, discussions on the cameras where they said that the the rainy pass uh, side the pontilla side looked like it was clouded in but it was wide open on the west side and that's exactly how i found it it would have been a sucker hole if i'd have gone into where any pass i didn't even <coughs> from the information i had i didn't even waste my time going into rainy pass because you don't want to get to the pass and then find out you're plugged on the other side. So I came around through Ptarmigan and, uh, and uh, um, uh, worked out fine. Exactly. That's a much safer option. Much safer, yes. <laughs> well, I think it's great advice that someone like you, who has been through all kinds of extremely adverse situations mm -hmm. and difficult conditions, still sees a reason to carry two GPS's, mm -hmm. an ELT, mm -hmm. a PLB, mm -hmm. a satellite phone, and still carry tent and winter mm -hmm. gear mm -hmm. even in the summer. Right. I think that's great advice that all pilots can take. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It, it can get pretty cold out there at night if you're at 10,000 feet on top of a snow-covered mountain. <laughs> <laughs> it sure can. <laughs> Mr. Shadon, thank you so much for being with us and letting us learn from your experiences. My pleasure. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, if you'd like to hear the stories from Ron and other pioneers of Alaskan aviation, please mark your calendars for November 7th. The Alaska Air Carriers Association is sponsoring a banquet to honor these amazing men and women. For more information, please call 277-0071. Ron's stories are a great reminder to be prepared to spend the night or even a bit longer when you go flying. So until next time, fly safely. And today we had valuable information from uh, aviators across the Arctic Ocean. The hurricane hunters have been flying across the North Slope and our Alaska Sea Ice program was able to use some of that information to look and see uh, how their analysis is doing and we've added a lot of uh, sea ice across the Arctic coast. The main sea ice pack is still well north but as you've been watching in the recent days it is certainly moving southward as well with rapid freeze up going on across many of our northern coastlines there. So you can always get more information anytime by going to weather.gov slash anchorage slash ice dot php. Here's a look at the marine weather now for southeast. Stronger southeasterly winds will gradually subside as we head through the weekend. A 25 knot wind there from the south and southeast in the inner waterways with seas around 5 feet with south and westerly flow coming into the coastal areas. Seas running between 21 and about 22 feet. Winds between 25 and 30 knots there from the south and southwest become east and southeast as we get into Sunday as that frontal boundary moves in just a little bit more. We'll keep southerlies across the Lynn Canal with three foot seas there. Higher gusts, especially across the Stevens Passage and Frederick Sound regions and a southeasterly flow in Clarence Strait with seas starting at around eight feet but diminishing throughout the day to about five feet. For south central, stronger easterly winds will subside throughout the day starting out around 25 knots from the east with six foot seas on the outside 11 to 16 foot seas with the highest just outside of uh, Prince William Sound. A west and southwesterly flow in Cook Inlet and west of the Barren Islands in Shelikoff Strait, 15 to 25 knots there. That will diminish and become northerly on Sunday as drier air sweeps in, 15 to 20 knots coming down Cook Inlet and west of the Barrens. We'll hold on to small crafts on the north and western side, 30 knot winds there with 8 to 11 foot seas and northerlies inside of Prince William Sound. For the Alaska Peninsula, northwesterlies hitting the Alaska 
coastline on the Bering Sea. Uh, Northwesterlies inside of Bristol Bay at 20 knots with a four foot sea. Seas as high as nine feet the further south on the coastline you go. Westerlies on the Pacific side, nine to 11 foot seas there diminish a little bit around Castle Cape all the way down toward Chignik and Northwesterlies out of Sand Point and King Cove may still be up to 40 knots and pick up during Sunday with 18 foot seas on the north side and 12 foot seas on the Pacific side. For the Aleutians, the north and westerly wind will continue thanks to high pressure to the west of Shemya. Look for northerlies across Kiska at 25 knots, 30 knot winds on the Bering Sea coast side, Pacific side looking at 30 knots with 9 to 11 foot seas. And we'll see a little bit of a change on Sunday as high pressure shifts eastward ever so slightly, 15 to 20 knots in the west. Uh, 25 to 30 knots across most of the central chain to Nikolsky and then a much stronger flow from Unalaska and eastward into the Alaska Peninsula. North and northwesterly winds on the Pacific side, south of Nikolsky and Adak and Atka only at 25 knots with 7 to 8 foot seas. For the west coast, a northerly flow will continue through the weekend. 35 knots around St. Lawrence Island and the Pribilofs with 40 knot winds north of Nunavak Island with 13 foot seas there. The winds diminish a little bit and become northwesterly for the Pribilofs and out of the Kuskokwim Bay. Nine foot seas are expected across the coastline there. North of Nunavak Island as high as 11 feet and northerlies around St. Lawrence Island with the wind at 30 knots. Across northeastern, I'm sorry, across the Arctic coast, you're looking at northeasterly winds at 20 knots there. East of Barrow, freezing spray will be an issue for all areas along the coast. 20 to 25, even 35 knot winds around Kotzebue Sound region and will continue that similar direction for Sunday. Winds diminish a little bit in the Beaufort. Freezing spray is still a threat and winds diminish across the Chukchi Sea from 20 to about 30 knots. Recapping tonight's weather, winds and rain will continue across southeast with the heaviest across the north and northeastern Gulf Coast. The low pressure system is filling in and slowly moving inland, pulling in even colder air across the western coast. Look for snow showers there to continue as winter weather advisories are in effect now for the central and eastern sections of the Tanana Valley northward toward the Brooks Range and parts of the North Slope. As we get into Sunday, another system takes its place, strengthens a little bit there and adds another round of rain and unsettled weather to the southeastern coastline with snow showers and unsettled weather continuing for the interior. I'm meteorologist Dave Snyder. Stay safe in your Alaska weather. These forecasts are to be used for planning purposes only. Call 1-800-WX-BRIEF for a formal pre-flight briefing. Always file a flight plan before you go flying. The U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary urges you to leave a float plan with a friend or the harbor master before you go boating. Alaska Weather is made possible by the following sponsors. The National Weather Service.